Hepatocellular carcinoma is becoming more prevalent, and unfortunately, it's not being discovered in its early stages when curative therapy is possible. Let's discuss who is at risk for hepatocellular carcinoma and how to discover it early. Hepatocellular carcinoma is the most common type of liver cancer, and its most common risk factor is liver cirrhosis. And this holds true for all types of chronic liver disease, including fatty liver disease causing cirrhosis. So any patient who has cirrhosis needs to be screened for hepatocellular carcinoma. The exception to this is a person who has end-stage liver cirrhosis and no plans for a liver transplant. These people have a short life expectancy, and so they're unlikely to benefit from a screening program because they're unlikely to benefit from chemotherapy and some of the drugs that would be used to treat the condition if it was found. Otherwise, all patients who have liver cirrhosis should be having routine screening, which we'll discuss shortly. The highest incidence of developing hepatocellular carcinoma occurs in patients who have uncontrolled hepatitis B and uncured hepatitis C. Much like the human papillomavirus or HPV can cause cervical cancer and some other cancers, hepatitis B and hepatitis C are known risk factors for developing hepatocellular carcinoma. And for this reason, patients who have hepatitis B should enroll in screening programs sooner than having cirrhosis. So any man that's 40 should start getting regular screening and any woman who's 50 should also start screening. Hepatitis B is very common within Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. And for this reason, hepatocellular carcinoma is a more common cause of death in these parts of the world. Sadly, uncontrolled hepatitis B can be transferred from a mother to her child. And while it's rare, children can develop hepatocellular carcinoma, which is almost always in the context of this vertical transmission from mother to infant. In developed countries, there's active screening for hepatitis B amongst pregnant women to prevent this vertical transmission. So if you have these risk factors for developing liver cancer, how should you be screened? To start, get an ultrasound of the liver every six months to look for new growths. Additionally, a simple lab test called alpha beta protein acts as a tumor marker. If we see a new growth over one centimeter, or we see the AFP rise over 20, then these are indications to get more advanced imaging, such as a CT of the liver or an MRI of the liver. What would a CT or an MRI show? Interestingly, liver cancer is unique in that it rarely requires a biopsy and can most often be diagnosed by imaging alone. And this is because of a unique characteristic of the liver. The healthy liver receives most of its blood supply from the portal vein, but a new cancer receives its blood supply from the hepatic artery. When we time the contrast in the MRI or the CT to the phase of the liver blood, then we can see whether it's lighting up from the healthy portal vein or if it's more concerning and lighting up during the hepatic artery phase. If we see a growth that's getting its blood supply from the hepatic artery, then that is suggested that this may be a liver cancer. Based on nuances of the imaging, a radiologist can grade the likelihood that the growth is a liver cancer. If it's highly likely, then they can confirm that this is unfortunately a liver cancer, but we can embark on treatment. If there's a moderate risk of it being a liver cancer, then we can recommend that there be follow-up imaging. Sometimes when there's a fairly high likelihood, but not enough certainty, we may rarely recommend a biopsy in those cases. I think there's a handful of times in a year that that's the case. For patients with the risk factors we discussed, liver cancer is a leading cause of death. And so patients with cirrhosis will prolong life by actively participating in liver cancer screening programs. So it's very important to keep up to date with an ultrasound and an alpha beta protein every six months. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe to the channel to be alerted to some of the other ways that we can help manage cirrhosis to ensure that you live a longer, healthier life. Thank you and be safe.